my friend. Thank you very much. Hello, friends. How are you? Oh, good. We're all working. I get it. Look up. It'll be fine. Um, now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to shake it up a little bit. We're going to do something uh, very cliche, but it's going to be fun. Everybody stand up. So here's what we're going to do. I want everybody to put their right hand up in the air. And we're going to shake that five times. Five, four, three, two, one. You ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Great. Next time, you're going to say it very loudly at me. Great. We're going to put up our left hand. Five, four, three, two, one. You ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Mwah, lovely. Now we're going to take our right foot. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. Perfect. Left foot louder. Five, four, three, two, one. Whoa, you, you all went for it. It's like you've done this before. Fantastic. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do four, three, two, one with all limbs. Three, two, one with all limbs. Two, one. And then one, one, one. And then you're going to go bazonkers. Cool? Okay. So you're ready. Four, three, two, one. Louder, louder. Three. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Two, one. Two, one. Two, one. Two, one. Yay! Yeah, cool, sit down. Okay, good. So let's talk about what just happened other than goodness, why did that just happen? Yep, great. So um, Freddie Mercury, the boom boom claps, which we will call it the boom boom claps for copyright infringement. The boom boom claps are fantastic and I love it because y'all don't know me, nor should you, because <laughs> that would be creepy. <laughs> but you know me and you joined me for the boom boom claps, right? And all of a sudden we created a space that we all got to live in. No longer is it me against you, is it us on the stage against whatever, it's behind you for the first time. We are in one room together and together we can create really great things over and over and over again. Now this is a painting called Chaos. This is uh, uh, from an uh, artist named Mark Quinn um, and it is the collection of colors on the palette. <clears throat> Excuse me, he created this for the sole purpose of shenanigans. But here's the fun part. If you look at this, you remember the 90s? Y'all remember the 90s? Ha ha ha, 90s, put that away. Uh, in the 90s, you could go to the mall and you could look at the paintings, right? And it becomes a dolphin. So if you close your, that's not real. This isn't real, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> that's not, she's really trying. I saw, yeah, you were like, <gasps> I'm gonna get it, it's gonna be dolphin. No, there's no dolphin. This is chaos. So chaos personified in art form. We deal with chaos all the time. As an improviser, my job is to make sense of the chaos that comes at me over and over and over again. And today, we're gonna talk a little bit about that and how to make that easier for yourselves. The biggest way to make that easier for yourself is to redefine chaos as a gift. We're gonna talk a lot about that today too. It's gonna to be great. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so here's the thing that we don't talk about is that this happens to us all the time, right? Y'all go to Starbucks. At some point in Starbucks, you had to choose what drink you wanted to drink. You had to look at that menu, which is not a menu at all. It just says grande, bigger than grande. What's that, venti? Right, yeah, see this is how often I go to Starbucks, venti. Uh, you had to choose, you had to hear what other people are saying and you try it out. First time, maybe it worked. I'd like a caramel floppa latte with a frackin' narpa make. And everybody's like, yeah, great, that sounds awesome. And they make it and they're like, it's not that hard of an order. <laughs> the ticket's like that long, right? But it's over time it evolved. The first time you tried it, it might not have been great, but you did it and you, tried it and either you put it down or you just muscled your way through it. The next time you got to do it, you worked on it, you tweaked it a little bit. You took what was chaos and made sense of it over time. We have to make these choices. These things that could be scary, we make for ourselves and we make it part of ourselves. It's not too dissimilar to Back to the Future. You all seen Back to the Future? Yeah, 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 got it. So Back to the Future is really fun. They teach Back to the Future as a script in film schools all over the country because it is what we call a seamless, tight script. Nothing in this script is introduced that is then later paid off. An example that you may have heard from, uh, well, the internet, is that um, they, when they are first taking the time machine back in time, they are at the Twin Pine Mall, and then when they go into the f uh, past, Ooh, they go forward into the past. When they go to the past, they break a pine tree. When they come back to that scene at the mall at the end of the movie, it's called the Lone Pine Mall. 
They don't talk about it, it just is. There's lots of examples where they just make sense of stuff that could have been weird. That, and that's what we have an opportunity to do. And that's what we do all the time. It is like a constant leap out of a building, falling. We say to each other like, oh, it'll be fine. There's soft things on the ground. There's haystacks, there's beds, there's beanbag chairs, there's stuffed animals everywhere. It's just lots of soft things on the ground that you can fall on. The idea though is that we never actually fully fall, we're, we're, we never land, we're always falling, perpetually falling. And when we really need that support, there's your friends, there's your family, there's your coworkers to be there for you, and you can be there for someone else to help them. For instance, my grandmother, she's great, she's squishy, I'll land right on her. <laughs> Don't do that, it's not fun. That's my real grandma, by the way, <laughs> definitely her. Um, so. The, the point of this is that it is a muscle. What we do with these kinds of things is a muscle. We're always working it. The more we do it, the stronger we get. And it gets that much easier over and over again. Now, going back to Starbucks, you can celebrate the things that should be dissidents, that should be weird, that should be odd. I go to Starbucks often. You heard the name Pat Dwyer just recently, in fact. But you heard Pat Dwyer over and over and over again, right? When I go to Starbucks, and this is a consistency, this is eight out of 10 times, I am not exaggerating in the least, I get Todd. Couldn't tell you why, <laughs> but I'm standing on the end of the line waiting for my drink and inevitably they're like, Todd, is Todd here? First seven times it happened, I didn't respond. <laughs> then slowly it's become a game, it's become something that I celebrate. They say Todd and I'm like, yes! Todd is here for drinks! And I make it this character, this ridiculous thing, and I trance around Starbucks. I could be in an airport, I could be in some location here in Iowa, it doesn't matter. It's always Todd and it's always a celebration. In fact, my wife has even started to set me up. Now she's like, uh-oh, Todd gets a drink. Yes, he does! Yet, long story short, we're getting a divorce. Um, <laughs> This was at Disney World recently. That's, I, you commission, can you just draw a picture of my family? No. Okay, anyways. <laughs> Laughter is the key to this. Laughter makes this easier. This is all the health benefits of laughter. But this is just the stuff I can source. There's tons of stuff out here. We're not gonna talk, I'm not gonna take my time or your time talking about that, because y'all can, can research that on your own. What I do wanna talk about is the chemical concoction that is released into your brain when you laugh for five seconds. Dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, endorphins, all of that flooded into your brain for five seconds of laughter. There are two other activities that do this. What are those activities? <laughs> Anybody? What? Anybody? No, okay. <laughs> We're gonna call this falling in love. So falling in love, yes indeed, one of them. Uh, what's the other one? Exercise, nope, not all of them, it's close. What else? What? Music, I thought you said eating a Cheez-It. I'm like, well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, fair enough. Uh, eating a Cheez-It. Um, uh, the actual answer is doing a bunch of cocaine. So those are your choices. You can do a ton of cocaine, you can fall in love, which is just tedious at best, or Five seconds of laughter. That is literally all that it takes. It, here's the thing with this concoction. We know that you learn better. We know that you take information in better. 30, 40, up to 70% more ability to learn by laughing for five seconds. Some of the science that's coming out now is why do children learn so quickly? It's because they laugh way more than we do maybe. There's one guy out there who's like, that's why, it's me. Anyways, it, you, we have the possibility of taking our teams and taking our, our groups and taking our uh, uh, learning to a whole new level simply by laughing, simply by being with each other and enjoying each other and allowing those chemicals to come out. 50% of our happiness is up to you. We like to believe that that's not the case, but that ain't true, friends. 50% is up to you, the rest is like, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and then genetics, whatever. <laughs> but like, even if you take Maslow, Maslow's hierarchy of needs and the 50% the of that choice, it's already more than 50%. Like, it is actively a choice to be happy. 
That having been said, let's talk about improv. These are some of the techniques uh, that we use for improv to help us move forward in our conversations, in our performances. One of them is give generously. We make sure that we put out more information to each other. We put our phones away. We're always giving to one another. Secondly, we say yes. Yes and, people have heard about yes and, right? Especially in this group, there's like 47,000 speakers are like, everybody hear yes and? Yeah, of course. So with yes and, we say yes to each other to move things forward. Are we going to the moon? Yes. Are we going to rockets to fill us cheese? Yes. And that cheese rocket is also filled with mice. Yay, everybody loves mice in space. I don't know. Uh, so we have the ability to move ourselves forward easier by simple agreement. That having been said, if there is agreement, there are no mistakes. It's impossible <laughs> to have mistakes. So we always are moving forward and there's nothing wrong and those things that could be mistakes become gifts. They aren't hindrances anymore. They're glorious things that we get to have for each other. And then lastly, we just go for it. Right or wrong, whatever you want to define, we just party, we travel, we go for it. It is a baggage of gifts rolling down a hill, going faster and faster, and you just, it's like a grocery store, like over and over and over again. It's super fun. It can be super fun. I want to thank you for joining me. <laughs> I do want to, I want you to know, like, you, you have the ability to be more powerful over and over and over again. I want everybody to stand back up real quick. And I want everybody to say yay real loud. One, two, three. Yay! Great. Now, everyone, I want everybody to say boo. boo. Good. Did you laugh when you said boo? Okay, cool. That went weird. Great. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, uh, Pat's on stage. Yay! Pat's on stage. Yay! Oh, no, you could have said boo that time. That's fine. Okay, wait. Here, let's try it again. We're going to say yay. yay. And we're going to say boo. boo. Great. Pat's on stage. Yay! Pat's on stage. Boo. Yes, exactly. That's right. We can say yay. We can say boo. And it can still be fun over and over and over again. My name's Pat Dwyer. If you like leadership, if you like change, if you like idiocy, call me. Well, no, call Angela. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Yay.